Welcome back to BNB Sports Zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled and hits. Welcome to DC. What is going on everybody, it's your boy Blue Look, coming at you with another video for the channel, uh, welcome back to the DME Sports Zone, and then today guys, I'm coming at you with a recap of day 15 for the Washington Commanders training camp, before I get into this video, I just want to shout out our sponsor at WSH on the daily, the fastest growing commanders page on Instagram, so make sure to check out his stuff, great commanders content, and... With all that being said, let's get straight to the video. So before we dive in on what actually happened today, I want to talk about and touch on Naughty's video from yesterday about Jonathan Allen making the top 100 list. That was great to see. The Nova kid, Stonebridge. I actually have a friend who played high school football with him. And just when we met him in person, we talked to him, talked to him and asked him about how he became such a successful NFL player. And he said it was all of his day one habits. He never drank, smoked, partied. And there's a reason why he's all pro. So Jonathan, I'm really happy. He's getting the respect he deserves. One thing that I will admit to, a few years ago when people were saying that we should trade package him for a quarterback like Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson, I was one of those guys that said we should trade him over Deron Payne and Matt Ioannidis. And boy was I wrong. Boy was I wrong. That was one of the takes that Naughty was 100% correct with. He was a, the big fan of Jonathan Allen, and he still is. So Jonathan Allen making top 100 list, that's really great to see. And sadly, per NFL Network, Terry McLaurin is not on the top 100 list, which, again, makes me upset because the top 100 list is a joke in my opinion. But it raised some eyebrows when I saw guys like Otto Beckham Jr., who had, I think, around 600 passing yards last year, and he made the list, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is talented, but again, Kyle Hueschek, a fullback over Terry McLaurin? I really thought after the name change that this whole media bias against the Washington team or this team owned by Dan Schneider was going to come to end, but the disrespect is unreal. And our friend of the channel, Rio Robinson, got to ask Terry after training camp today, after the practice, and he asked him, how did you feel after being snubbed? And he was like, man, I don't look at that stuff. I just keep on working hard. And Rio was like, yeah, man, you're going to prove them wrong. And I agree. I, Terry, I just bought his jersey the last week. Not making the top 100 list when he's a top 10 player at his position. That is unbelievable. And this year, he's going to have another great year. I'm so happy he's here for the long run. But that's pretty much it when it comes to the top 100 list. It is a joke. Nothing much else said. Scott Abraham, I don't know if we touched on this on the channel, but a few days ago, the Washington reporter did not, was a little bit under the heat on Twitter when team president Jason Wright went after him. And it was basically Scott conducted an interview with Carson and the interview could have been way better when it comes to the questions and how they were worded. Scott essentially was like calling him trash to his face when he was like, Philly didn't want you, Colts didn't want you. How are you going to do here in Washington? And Carson did a great job of answering the question. It was like he's just worried about on the field and where he's at right now. And Jason Wright, I still support him. As Bernardi says, he's his U Chicago brethren. But a t great team president. He's definitely changed the culture a lot. He has done some questionable things, whether it was that p uh, posting that picture of peeing on the Cowboys logo, or even in this case when he called out Scott Abraham on Twitter and said he's taking his rights of interviewing players on the team just doing that in public i mean in the public view is just not professional at all but i still believe in jason Wright. i still love him as a team president it's just stuff like this again it's a little drama but when the nfl gets to it when the nfl gets their hands on it they're gonna make a big deal out of it washington reporter gets berated on twitter by a team president you just make a big deal out of nothing if dan schneider is in the news you got to put something in the news when it comes to the washington team but yeah, man, that's pretty much everything that happened the past few days. Let's talk about what happened. Training camp, day 15. Weather wasn't good today. It was a little rainy. It was cloudy. 
Actually, it was more than a little bit of rainy. It started raining, raining a lot. There were no pads today, so that was great to see. Off the preseason game, number one against the Panthers, where they lost by two. Tim Howell nearly led a comeback, but sadly, Matt Corral, and he got lucky because a few boneheaded penalties ended up kicking the game-winning field goal. Tackle Cornelius Lucas is back. That's great to see. The offensive line, I thought, played pretty well. The first stringers played pretty well uh, in the preseason game. So I, that's really nice to see because we need all the protection for Carson. And the offense was cooking today, from what I could tell. Carson has been getting a lot better day after day. At the beginning of the camp, there were a lot of questions about his accuracy. And the media, of course, made a big deal of it as usual. But Carson looks way more comfortable. Curtis Samuel was catching balls across the middle. Jahan had a nice catch. Diami had a nice catch. Everyone was eating today, and that's great to see. The one thing I want to talk about is the specialists, the return specialists, and the woes that could potentially be upon us this upcoming season. I I wasn't I wasn't happy or satisfied with any of the returns that we saw on on uh, Saturday in the preseason game. Which, by the way, tickets were very cheap. I saw tickets for like one dollar. That's besides the point. Um, but yeah. Dax Milne, Alex Erickson, just none of them looked to par. There was one return by Dax Milne where he gained one yard, but he dodged like so many uh, special teams players and like broke a couple tackles. But again, this goes back to DeAndre Carter. Did we make the right decision of letting him go? I don't know, man. I really like DeAndre Carter. He was great. He was definitely our best specialist since Brandon Banks. If you don't know Brandon Banks, are you really a Washington fan? Let me, know, let me know your guys' thoughts on Brandon Banks and if you guys remember his prime days. Oh, my God. He was so goaded. But DeAndre Carter let him go, and now we might be stuck with special teams. We need someone that can return the ball. And I don't know if Al Alex Erickson was brought from Carolina to do that. I don't know. It's it's This is going to be a little bit frustrating if this is starting to become a problem where we don't have a return specialist. I don't think it will be Jahan. And maybe in a rarely on an emergency emergency situation where we're down by a lot and we need a spark, we just don't want to risk the injury. So again, hopefully this that was just week one. Maybe we might see some better punt returns the next two preseason games. But again, that's what I'm definitely worried about. And now the big thing that everyone's talking about: Antonio Gibson, the running back room with Brian Robinson. I'll say one thing: Brian Robinson looked great in preseason. He was just running, just kept his legs, kept chugging, chugging. Looked like he just wanted to keep on fighting for extra yards. And Antonio Gibson, as talented as he is, and I understand that he didn't play wide receiver or he didn't play running back in college. He was a wide receiver. Noah, another content creator on this channel, he said that on Tim Sports Talk live stream, which happened a few days ago. Evan, Naughty, you know we're all on that with Tim. He said that we're not properly using Antonio Gibson in this offense, and I agree. Antonio Gibson is an outside zone runner. He just can't run within the tackle. It's so frustrating. The vision sometimes isn't there. Slipping. I, I just, I, he's so talented, but we're just not using him right. And I don't think he's going to get cut. But if this fumble thing, and I, it's he led the league in fumbles last year, and Naughty kept saying this and reiterating it. It was a lot of them. were very costly in our own territory in the red zone. It's just, it, it was momentum killer. And I love AG. I really do. I, I want this guy to succeed. But that fumble just, it turned to eye for a lot of fans here. And I really think Brian Robinson is going to take the number one running back position. Naughty, that's his boy. You know, roll tide or whatever. Still go Hokies, but whatever. Um, um, Naughty's boy was saying from, you know, quite a while ago that Brian Robinson could take the number one position because AG has a fumbling issue. I just don't know if he'll be able to fix it come week one. He's def he's definitely it's definitely shown in the preseason game. After that fumble, he was running with the twos. So B Rob is might be in the number one load. I don't know. This is we're gonna be really interesting to see how this comes. Cuts are coming soon. And I'm just hoping the best for AG. As long as he fixes if he somehow finds a way to fix this fumbling issue, he'll be fine. But again, it's a big if. And the transition, I know it's his third year, but he should know how to handle the ball. But that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the commander so far. 
coming to play or going to play Kansas City at their home field on Saturday. So that's going to be really interesting to see how we line up with Patrick Mahomes and our first string team. Make sure to follow at WSH on the daily, the fastest growing commanders page on Instagram, great commanders content as usual. Follow us on social media at TikTok, Twitter, Instagram at DMV Sports Zone. And with that being said, I'm out. Peace.